Hi, this is Jenny. I can't come to the phone right now, but if you would please see your name and number, I would surely call you back as soon as I can, and God bless you, and have a wonderful day. Good night. If your friends are nerdy and you are nerdy too, I want to talk to you, Friends Talking Nerdy. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Friends Talking Nerdy. This is Tim Jowsma, the sexiest voice in podcasting today. And with me, I have the greatest legal mind of the Pacific Northwest. In my humble opinion, we have the Professor Aubrey. Hi, everybody. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you, Tim? Doing good. Yeah? My goodness, my goodness. Yeah. Um, yeah, d- d- despite the fact that um, in, on Monday, as you are aware, I got a pretty uh, sad anniversary to look forward to, and that is the anniversary of my mother passing away. Yay. Right. Yeah. And it's the 10th anniversary, right? 10 years, Yes. 10 years, so that's a pretty long time. Yep. Yeah, she (laughs) tried her best to die on February 28th because that was my wedding anniversary. (laughs) She She didn't like your wife, I No, no, she didn't. And, And it was a joke made at the time that she tried, but knowing my mother... You think she actually was trying... Uh, not in terms of like suicide, but in terms of because uh, it's like she had um, meningioma, uh, non cancerous brain tumors, and her doctors told her, you know, she had a specific amount of time. So um, at that time, she knew the end was very close. So I think that because of that, it wasn't like, you know, I'm going to take some pills to make sure I did. I'm not implying that, but it was just like her, her, her feeling was if you're going to do it, take me now because fuck her. You know? <laughs> Yeah, it sounds like she was a woman who had a good sense of humor. Um, she, in a lot of ways, she was like me. I mean, she was, she, when she made jokes, she made sure that she laughed. If everybody else laughed, it was kind of irrelevant, you know. (laughs) She was the type that wanted to, you know, be entertained, I guess. So, um, yeah. Yeah, she, the, the, the reason I say that, I mean, because I, I was thinking about it too, like, um, you know, I've talked about how, you know, she, you know, growing up, you know, obviously as the adult, it was her right to, um, as the head of the house, watch whatever she wanted on TV, but she liked to watch a bunch of shit. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> um, some good stuff along the way, some stuff that I kind of warmed up to, like uh, Golden Girls and whatnot, um, you know, apart from having to deal with the, tr- the trauma of seeing my sister get up in front of the TV and dance. Um, but, you know, she, <laughs> seeing that theme song, thank you, like that. All right, all right. <laughs> okay. Let's not be so cruel to Colleen. She's not here to defend herself. Yeah, we don't want to make her cry. <laughs> no but, tears. No tears on the Friends Talking Nerdy Show. Yeah. Should be a rule. But no, um, I, I think with her, she, because I, I, I was thinking about it with me too, it's like the older she got, the entertainment she liked was a lot more simple. And I think it's it's just, I mean, like me, admittedly, I mean, I love my, you know, Marvel movies and whatnot, but I would be a fool if I tried to imply that there, there there's depth to them, <laughs> in, intelligent type of depth. It's not, I mean, they're great movies, but it's not The Godfather, it's not higher, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, just, you know, she had a hard life. I mean, I think I told you a little bit about, you know, uh, her life before I came around and whatnot. So, um, it's a lot of, a lot of trouble. She also created herself, but <laughs> that's a different story for a different day. But, um, yeah, I think she just, when she wanted to laugh, she laughed, but you know, d- yeah, if that makes sense. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, 10 years. Um, I remember going back, flying back. My sister was able, um, to, uh, I'm sure she could even do it now. She's the type that, you know, like, um, you know, for, I was in California at the time, didn't think I could go back because, you know, money for a plane ticket and, you know, like 
20 minutes after um, after my sister made some calls to people, all of a sudden I'm flying to Grand Rapids for free <laughs> and uh, uh, flying back. So, um, yeah, so I remember going back and that was the, um, up to that point in 2011. That was six years since the last time I had seen any major snow. I went back in late February and I knew I was West Coast at that time because I flew back to Grand Rapids and didn't bring any winter wear. <gasps> No jacket or anything like that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. How Californian of you. Yeah. And I quickly ended up uh, going to like a local Goodwill in Grand Rapids and uh, and uh, getting a cheap jacket that looked like absolute shit. But, you know, warm is warm. Um, but my friend Chris actually picked me up and it was funny. Um, <laughs> he, he, he picked me up and was driving me there and we ended up going to the wrong address because um, uh, in, in Grand Rapids, it, it, uh, it's just like the same in Portland somewhat, but, um, the, you know, they have, you know, the northeast, southeast type of things. But sometimes they have roads that are really long. So they go from like the southwest side of town to the southeast side of town. Mm -hmm. And the address we were going to, to where my mother was. Um, he went to the southeast address first <laughs> and like we pull there it's like 11 o'clock at night the plane was late and all that and like we pull into the the, um, the first address and it's like a farmhouse in the middle of nowhere and we're pulling in um he had given me a joint to <laughs> smoke after i got in the car and i wasn't a heavy weed uh user at that particular time it did wasn't like you know in my like high school years where like weed is bad, you know, <laughs> you know. Oh god, I was a little conservative bitch. Were you? Yeah. That is so hard to believe. Uh, d d if you think about it, though, it's not. I mean, because I, I think my thing was I when I was a quote unquote conservative, I knew everything. <laughs> you know? mm. And I think the more I began to start questioning and more I realized that my opinion is probably not that good in a lot of areas when it comes to, you know, political knowledge and whatnot and, and to, you know, trust, you know, certain figures that have earned their reputation, um, whether it be in the news or po politicians or whatnot. At that point, then I realized that, you know, maybe I'm not as conservative as I thought because, wow, those people are weird. <laughs> Were your folks conservative? Um, I would have to say, yeah. Mm. Um, I mean, it's like we never, in terms of like, you know, like social, the social side of things, um, there was never any sort of like stigma if we had a black friend or anything like that. Um, in, in, in Grand Rapids, I gotta say that there, you know, in, in the eighties, it wasn't bad, but there was, it was still, you know, I, yeah, it was still America. It was There's... still America. And yeah. Um, cause I remember as a kid, like, like my mother, you know, when in like in kindergarten, she threw that phrase around. I'm not, I'm not gonna sugarcoat things. Um, and but I remember one time, um, I was like at a playground and I had this uh, plastic bag full of graham crackers and I'm on a swing and whatnot. And these two white kids came and like pushed me off the swing, you know, started beating me up and whatnot. And you know, and then this black kid came and then like ran them off. And then what he did is collect my graham crackers and walk me back home. And you know that stuck with me every time my mother you know was ignorant and and, and i don't want to get i i don't but she used words like that but it also wasn't like an everyday type of thing for my entire childhood it was just you knew where she stood <laughs> you know mm -hmm. um but you know yeah anyway so um so you pulled up to the farmhouse in the middle of the night. Yes. And it was up. 11 o'clock, you were stoned. <laughs> yeah, and like the paranoid stone from like not having, you know, you smoked any weed for like years. <laughs> you know, previous on that point, it's just like you noticed everything. And then me being the paranoid person I am, it's just like, oh my God, the cops are going to find us. Oh my God, we're going to get pulled over and I'm going to go to jail, you know, type of deal. Um, but... Finally made a UE headed back to uh, the right address. So did you go to the door and wake the people up, or did you figure out that it wasn't? No, because like we pulled in and like all the lights were out, and I figured with a dead body in the house and people that were there from other parts of Michigan, the lights wouldn't be out. So I called my sister, 
and you know figured out you know it was a mistake on our end and then by that time as the conversation on the phone ended that's when the lights went on in that house and like somebody you know uh, like stepped out the door like what the hell is going on here uh, because in in that part of the country it would be odd to have a car pull into your driveway and hang out there for a couple minutes you know yeah i mean it's still pretty odd in the city but not as much just because it's a lot more active you know yeah so, so you know, the, those people in that house were well within their rights to be like, hey, we're cool here, right? <laughs> you know? But, um, yeah, we finally made it there. And my Aunt Cindy that was there, uh, Cousin Kyle, last time I saw them both there. Um, and then uh, my grandma and grandpa, uh, my, who was my mother's foster parents. Um, but um, she had kept in touch with them. And because they were so important to her, they essentially were. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if that made sense. And then... Yeah, at that point, saw my mother on the bed. Yeah, and she had already uh, passed away just as I was coming in from Minneapolis. Mm. So, yeah, got to spend some time in the room alone. Sad, holding, you know, holding back tears. But when she was lying there, I thought of those YouTube videos of, you know, parents with, like, newborn babies, and then they, like, move them up. <laughs> <laughs> to make the baby say something I didn't do it but I thought you know doing something like getting a little I give all my money to Tim cause he's my coolest kid not my adopted child <laughs> <laughs> something like that cause you know if I had said something like that when my mother was alive she would have said oh stop I mean cause like like it was like not even not even I'm still like junior, senior in high school. I was already joking with her about nursing homes. Mm. You know, so. <laughs> that you were going to put her in a nursing home? Yeah, little things. Like um, like there was a, a, a commercial for 60 Minutes one time. And they were like, talking about like the worst nursing home in the country. And I was like, pay attention, mom. <laughs> things like that. And I even had her on my um, public access TV show. Oh. Yeah, I wish I still had that tape because it was all stream of conscious uh, stuff. But it, yeah, it wasn't like the first episode. The first episode, um, a lot of the audio I taped ended up not being usable because the audio was dead. Mm. Um, so I had to kind of like take the footage I had and stretch it. So the first episode of the Tim Jowsma show on GRTV in Grand Rapids um, had like an eight minute stretch of what appears to be a hot dog sitting in water at my gas station shop. <laughs> <laughs> but I, all it was was just like a short little clip where I walked out of the room real quick and then walked back. But I, I edited that clip and just made it seem as if that hot dog was just, just sitting in that gas station. And then on, occasionally it would you know put up little graphics like, sorry, folks, there's stuff better on Channel A. <laughs> you know? <laughs> That sounds fun. Yeah. It was fun, um, but I'm glad you don't have to go through the public access route anymore because, one, with our tools we got in our hands uh, that we use every day, our phones, I mean, you can it, it, a, a lot of those cameras have um, s- such quality lenses, it's pretty much comparable to the type of cameras you would get at a public access place anyway. Mm-hmm. And you got directors like Steven Soderbergh and whatnot that have made, you know, Hollywood level feature films on iPhones. So, you know, we have so much more power today. And I'm th- th- just those classes we had to take with, mm, oh, I hate that place. Anyway. Yeah. I did a public <laughs> access show. So I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. It's, it's totally revolutionized everything about the media. Yeah, and that's, you know, that's something that, you know, when you have a podcast like this, you have to think about because you want to, you want to offer something that is unique. You you want to offer something that's not cookie cutter that you can't get anywhere else or can't get somewhere else with a famous face attached. And, you know, that's something I, I think about, you know, with our show, you know, what can we do to, you know, keep things lively, keep things original, keep things, you know, unique enough to where if we do get a a stranger popping in, uh, checking out our show. And if that is you at home, how you doing? Um, 
that you know they they will give it a chance in in, in like what they like what they see yeah 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 but 10 years um gonna be uh th- th- this coming uh sunday as, as we record this we are making plans for me to finally um take care of the ashes situation and um there may or may not be some footage that may pop up somewhere because of that but um we'll see but you know 10 years it is amazing how uh how fast time can fly and how much things can change because I go from like a teetotally married guy 10 years ago <laughs> to <laughs> polyamorous guy <laughs> today who loves his weed but you know <laughs> all changes for the better in my view damn right you hear me complaining no shit you didn't live with my ex-wife my god <laughs> anyway Anyway, speaking of bad stories, um, let's talk about Joss Whedon. Okay. (laughs) Great segue. (laughs) Great segue into Joss Whedon. Yeah. um, Yeah, about a week or so ago, um, Charisma Carpenter, who uh, was on Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Angel as the character Cordelia Chase, came out and um, corroborated um, some accusations that were made by a cast member of uh, DC's Justice League movie um, that was directed by Joss Whedon and uh, essentially her account of her days on Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Angel recounts how this person, Joss Whedon, who has presented himself as a hardcore feminist, what every guy should aspire to be if you want to respect women, um, was really leading a double life and using that public persona to, to take advantage, you know, mm. uh, of people. Now, it wasn't, um, it wasn't like, it, it, it wasn't a situation where he was like hitting on her or anything like that but you know I, I can't say he wasn't a sexual harasser at work because his ex-wife came out a couple years back and stated that he had numerous affairs with um, actors and, um, and and backstage people on, on Buffy the ba- Vampire Slayer and you know as the, uh, the, the producer of that show he's the boss mm-hmm. and you can't have a boss having romantic relationships with with employees you just can't even if it turns out good you just can't because your impartiality as a boss goes away the moment you have that type of relationship am i right well um i'm just trying you know i i i I don't think there's anything legally preventing people from dating um, well, I know a lot of uh, employers. It, it, it's it, like it's more like company rules. Like right, it's more like company policy. And yeah, there's some companies who frown on it, and there's some companies who embrace it. So, yeah, I mean, I think the companies that embrace it are at much higher risk of you know liability for the harassment. Or than just... the companies who don't, right? The companies yeah. who are like, no, there should be no relationships between supervisors and their supervisees um which seems like a reasonable rule mm-hmm. uh, they can say that they have prevented you know they've probably avoided some liability so yeah and i mean word is uh i read a follow-up article um from variety on the situation i mean where it is in the 90s that he um because of the nature of how they filmed Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the filming location was actually kind of isolated, so he didn't have studio heads kind of regularly monitoring him. So he was kind of left alone to his own devices, and mm-hmm. because he kept everything within budget, and there were you know no like major delays on a consistent basis or anything like that, there was no reason for studio heads to think there was a problem. But he was fostering a situation to where uh, apparently um, he's the type of person that you know made it very clear who he liked and who he didn't like and people would scurry political favor at that point to be on the like list and not the unlike list uh-huh. and again that that I with anybody who has that type of power and abuses it just honestly just makes me fucking sick I mean, I, I've I've had situations like that in the past, like you know, at my previous employer, Apple, of someone in a position of power abusing their power and getting away with it. That's a shitty feeling, 
you know, and it's important when you have a situation like this, when you have uh, like the, you know, we, and we won't go into details because you didn't see it, but, you know, like the new documentary on HBO Max, uh, Alan V. Farrow, um, it's important to tell these stories about people in power that abuse that power because you don't the, the fear i guess is that you know you hear somebody like does something on set like that and, and, and the fear is that you know they would on a surface hollywood would on a surface level like do one thing to get that person out of the studio system but not do anything to correct the culture per se that that allowed something like that to happen and too often you know too often when you hear stories about people in position like a Joss Whedon, you know, it's, it's, yeah, it, it, for the article mentioned too that he was a good, you know, politician essentially talk, you know, with the producers at, at the, that the studio he would treat one way, the actors, you know, that he ran were, you know, treated a different way and just, yeah, it, I don't know. Do you have any thoughts? Well, I mean, you mentioned the Alan V. Farrow movie and um i always think to me it feels very exploitative of the victims or the survivors of whatever that trauma was to to have like a movie documenting these incredibly profoundly personal parts of their life Right. So I think there is this balance. There's a balance to be struck between wanting victims to come forward and disclose a lot of information and at the same time, like recognizing that that doesn't mean that everyone has come forward or that there aren't other people who other producers who aren't doing the exact same thing um so and it's it's something like this there's not going to be a perfect world where there will never be any sort of internal strife where someone will not use their power in a negative way in a, in, a, in an employment environment i think the the what I would like to see out of society more, and who knows if we'll ever get that, is is holding those people in power more res- more responsible for their actions. And and, and and believe me, when it comes to the Alan V. Farrow thing, I mean, I get, I, 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 I you're not wrong, <laughs> you know. Um, uh, you know, I I did take the time to see it. I know you said that it, you know because of the topic at hand, it wasn't something you were comfortable with, you know. For me, I mean, for for this particular instance, um, you know, like Dylan Farrow, the child in question who was abused, she's an adult now, and she's the one that's essentially the voice of this, so she's directly involved. Um, so it's not like a third party, like, you know, any biography type of thing. <laughs> so there, so it, but again, because Woody Allen was so chummy with a lot of other power players that have turned out to be just as evil as, as him, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's like uh, those doors do need to be open, in my opinion, to make sure that something like this becomes an exception and not as much the rule because it just sounds like you know the more you hear about a Woody Allen type a Bill Cosby type you know or any other celebrity from an uh, older age that we all we used to have hold a high regard that would that now we don't because we know about them you know yeah 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 anyway let's move on to a lighter topic <laughs> before we just sit here yeah, and say it's been kind yeah, of, it's yeah. been kind of heavy yeah, so far death and douchey people death and douchey people yeah let's uh yeah we toss it out on and this is kind of a, a last minute type of deal so you know i'm not surprised that we didn't have as big, a big turnout or anything like that but um you know we tr- uh, and we will definitely do this again with a little more build up so we have time to prepare and have more questions available but wanted to do like an ask me anything Mm-hmm. Um, t- t- type of scenario here now a- again to be clear I just put it out this afternoon as we record and we got one response the, the, this recording um, I-, I was originally supposed to record with the reverend today but the reverend had uh, other issues so um, so recording here with 
uh, the professor here, so we're improvising. <laughs> That's what they call it in Hollywood, folks. We're improvising. So, um, yeah, what we're going to do is uh, we'll, we'll ask that question, and we'll both answer that, but I know you also had some questions you wanted to ask me. I do, yeah. So do we want to do Lisa's question first? Yeah, let's do Lisa's first. Let me go to... Uh, let me go to the Facebook here, but um, do you want to say something to kill some time while I look at that question? Sure, why not? Okay. Um, so, the what could I talk about? I don't know. Oh my gosh. Hmm. <laughs> Thanks! Um, <laughs> now, oh man. Talk about something. Yeah, I'll talk. Uh, what? Deer and headlights. Deer and headlights. Okay, here we go. We got the question. So, Lisa Chilton, thank you, by the way. You are one hell of a friend. Known her for over a decade, and I've only met her in person once. I know. That's so amazing. That is crazy. Yeah, that's but, really good. Yes, definitely is. Um, but her question. What's one food or thing you'd never eat? Like, even in, if you were stranded on a desert island and you'd give your shoe a shot first. Do you want me to answer first? Yes. I would not. I will never, and I never have, and I never will. Never will I eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Why? I just will not. And I haven't. My whole life. And so I'm not going to start now. Oh, it's man. the most disgusting sounding thing I have ever heard of no, in it is. my it's life. The, it's the, it can be, depending on the type of peanut butter that you use and the type of bread that you have, it can be a great experience. Now, the jelly doesn't matter that much? No, yes and no. I mean, if you're talking like the generic stuff you can get for a dollar, you know, like the Fred Meyer branded stuff, mm -hmm. maybe not the best, but you know. Have some Smuckers, or you you pitch in for some of the, like the like like the organic stuff or the higher end stuff. You can get a better taste that way. So, like like the stuff that's like essentially like Jello, <laughs> the jelly Jello type of thing. Uh huh. The jelly with no pieces of fruit in it whatsoever. Yeah, it's just like yeah yeah that's yeah. But like the jam that you have that you know that that's a great jam. Thanks, that's a homemade jam. Mm, who mm -hmm. made that? Yeah, I made that. Ooh. All right. Mm -hmm. um, no, anything I wouldn't eat. Let's see. Um, well, liver. I will never eat liver. I had it once and as a kid. And what kind of liver did you have? Beef liver? Probably. I don't know. Uh, there was liver. Fucking liver. I don't no, like the, actually, liver tastes very, very different depending on which animal it comes from. Hmm. Don't care. <laughs> I hate liver. I'll never eat liver. Or things with eyes. That was an interesting uh, ordering experience. Um, we ordered from a sushi restaurant, I believe, right? Mm -hmm. um, but have it <laughs> delivered. And, um, I have a habit, and it works for me, and I'm not complaining of if I like go to a restaurant or order out or something like that. I'm usually a creature of habit, and I usually get like the same thing every time, which you know is fine for me. But sometimes people can get frustrated with that if I'm going out with them, whatever. But not saying you are, of course. But mm -hmm. um, but the, what I what I ended up doing was like I'm gonna order something different. Yes, I'm gonna do it. Yay! And then grab the phone, made the order. It came, and it was a soup that had a shrimp in it with the head still on and the eyes still in there and just and it's little antenna antennas it was like don't eat me <laughs> and and it was i saw it and it was just like no oh, and they had clams in it like clams and it looked like it looked like did you ever see the, the that the three stooges short where like curly is trying to eat like some clam chowder and puts like the soup cracker in, but then turns his head and the clam's still alive. So it eats the cl it eats the cracker, and he turns around, and goes ah! like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've never seen that, but it sounds funny. You've not three stooges. Wow, mm. surprise! You're not a oh, wait. You're a girl. You're not a three stooges fan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a setup. That surprised then. <laughs> okay. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, boys seem to love Three Stooges. They're great. Yeah, they're great. Yeah. Just 
basic physical slapstick comedy like that. Just get the basic premise and get guys slapping each other, throwing pies in each other's face. What do you think? I had a pie for no chance in hell. I mean, come on. First pies I ever saw thrown in the face were in the Three Stooges. It was in honor of them. <laughs> nice. All right. Do you have a question for me? I do. I have uh, several questions for you. All right. Um, first question is, what is the most courageous thing you have ever done, Tim Jasma? Uh, ask Stan Lee the question. Yeah, because... In 2016 at Rose City Comic Con, and I've had the audio on the show before, and uh, the video is on the Friends Talking Nerdy YouTube page. But in 2016, Stan Lee came to Portland, Oregon for the last time, and um, that was my first assignment writing for Latina Review Media, um, which, you know, a site like that, I don't think I'm ever going to write for them again because I was lucky to get paid 200 bucks a month, and that was after a year of working there. So they take advantage of their writers. Yeah. Um, but you know, once Stanley was there, it's just like this is the last time he's going to be here. I gotta try, <laughs> you know, because it's like I, I, I sometimes I it's I, I can be pretty introverted and pretty scared to you know even breathe sometimes. But sometimes something there's like a goal that I I in my soul I know I can achieve, and just like nothing in the world will m- make me stop. And so I had to, in front of the auditorium at the Oregon Convention Center, that seats, what, 2,000 people, the main convention center. Yeah. I was the fourth person to ask Stanley a question. And it took a beer to do it, but I, I, I did it. And I think, uh, you know, uh, if I had, I, I would probably ask another question today if I had, had a redo, just because I, I now realize that there's a difference between con answers and an answer uh, for a question that, that if I had a chance with him one-on-one, I probably would have got a different answer. But even then, the audience seemed to like my question. I mean, they gasped. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Mm-hmm. Okay, a corollary question. All right. What is the most cowardly thing you've ever done? Mm. Hmm. Not saying I haven't done cowardly things because I know I have. It just don't tend to reflect on them as much. Mm, <laughs> interesting. So I don't usually tr- remember those events. I mean, I'm sure if I had more time to think about it I, I could bring up something but well that's really great that you don't have something that's like replaying itself in your head well there are plenty of things that do which just oh. <laughs> nothing like that <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay um when was the last time you thought to yourself that something was about to change everything do you know what I mean by that yeah. Okay. I mean, I think the Stan Lee question, I, I would have to put that on the uh, on that list because for me that was a huge deal getting the courage to uh, be able to do that, and then from there, um, you know, I I was able to take that and you know t- take that and build what you know help build what we're you know dealing with now in the podcast you know kind of took the energy so just yeah something like that cool um finally last question Ooh, last question under cross-examination by the greatest <laughs> Uh, so, did you have an animal or a blanket or some like a pillow that was special to you when you were growing up? Um, yeah, I know in kindergarten I had uh, a little pet, ele- a little like stuffed um, elephant animal that I called elephant tea. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Elephant tea. Yeah. So, yeah, that was probably the only stuffed animal that I was ever really attached to. But that, you know, quickly ended. And, and, you know, we had animals growing up that I was attached. I mean, I've, I've always loved cats, but um, n- n- don't think I've ever, ever really had an animal that, like, I ever connected with, like, I connect on a human. I mean, I've, I've loved all my animals, but, you know, at the end of the day, I'm still an animal, I guess. So, 
um, the conservative Michigan upbringing at work here, folks. <laughs> so, yeah, that's always an interesting balance. I mean, I think everybody sort of strikes that balance with their pets in a different way. Yeah, because it's like they a, a, a pet is a living creature. A pet is you. you it's a different type of intelligence than humans. I don't, because like, I think you had even brought it up to me that, you know, you, you can't like take human intellect and judge it against a cat intellect. Cause it's apples and oranges, two different things, you know, for a cat, you know, I think our cats are both intelligent in, in a lot of ways. I think Phil's also a coward in a lot of ways. <laughs> but I don't want to fight. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, it was fun to ask me questions. Ask you questions. All right. Any other n- anything off the top of your head you want to? This is your time with the microphone on. I gotta say something. You gotta say something. Apparently, yeah. <laughs> so ask a question. Well, I can't, but I thought of these questions beforehand. <laughs> I was prepared. Okay. 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 Well, then, do you want to move on? Yeah, let's move on to our next activity. Our next activity here, folks, is going to be a fun one. A little yes. thing called Fuck, Mary Kill. The first time we're doing it. Yay! Yay! Tell the folks at home what Fuck, Mary Kill is. So Fuck, Mary Kill is where you um, engage with another or several other people and present three people, characters, Fictional people, actual people, historical figures, whoever, mm-hmm. but three. And the receiving person has to say they would, which one of those three people they would fuck, which one they would marry, and which one they would kill. Yep. And we were discussing earlier, did we want to go with the strict interpretation of that or just the general We're going to go with the strict interpretation. Okay, the strict interpretation that I came up with, because I thought about it, and any time I've played this game in the past, the fucking Mary is kind of a cheat, because they don't imply, I mean, because they imply, essentially, that, you know, with the fuck part, that you could just fuck whenever, and then most people just, you know, clump the two people that they're most attracted to into the fucking Mary, and then it's interchangeable. What we're going to do is this, for the fuck part, It's going to be somebody you want to, if you had an opportunity to have sex with this person, you would, and it would be the most greatest sexual moment in your personal history, but you can only do it once. And the merry part, sex may occur on occasion, but it's more for, you know, like procreation purposes, you know, something like that. It's not, you'll be able to have those intimate moments with that person in marriage, but it's going to be a different experience than it would be with the fuck. Gotcha. Okay. All right. And and, and, and yeah, that way I, I felt I felt going that route would again take away that cheat that would make it to where you know you, you definitively had to put a person in into a particular slide. And one other thing too, we are you know this is the 21st century, so if you're not comfortable playing fuck Mary kill talking about you know both sexes, then grow up. Or all genders. Or all genders. My apologies. Yeah. Or all genders. Grow up. <laughs> you know, but throw some names at me. All right, why don't I? Why don't you go first? Why don't I go first? Yeah, give me some okay. people. Okay, let's see. Fuck, Mary, kill. Between these three choices, Cameron Diaz, Rebel Wilson, and Anna Kendrick. I don't know who Anna Kendrick is. I can bring up her picture real quick, but the other two. Well, who was the first one again? Uh, Cameron Diaz. Oh my gosh. And in terms of the person, um, I would say take whatever, it, 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 whether it's an actress or a character, take whatever era of that um, actor or character you want. So like Cameron Diaz, if you want to make your decision based on 1990s Cameron Diaz, by all means, go ahead. Okay. If that makes sense. Okay. Okay. Well, Cameron Diaz is definitely dead. No, her career isn't. <laughs> she's not <laughs> acting anymore. She's alive. No, but, but she, she I I killed her. Oh, you killed her? She's yeah, dead. She's okay. dead. Why, why would you kill her? Um, 
That's Anna Kendrick. That's right? Anna Kendrick. Yeah. But Cameron Diaz, why would you kill her? What does she do to you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to kill someone. Okay. So it's reluctant killing. Now, who would you fuck? Um, Anna Kendrick. You would fuck Anna Why would you fuck Anna Kendrick? Well, because I want to marry Rebel Wilson. Because I actually know who Rebel Wilson is. And I think that we would get along. Okay. And <laughs> I don't know who Anna Kendrick is. But I just looked at her picture. And she's very attractive. And you'd want to fuck her. And I felt an attraction to her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you pig, Tim. <laughs> okay, so here are your three. Okay, my three. Here we go. Poison Ivy, Mary Jane, Mary Jane from Spider Man. Mm -hmm. What's her last Mary name? Mary Jane Watson. Mary Jane Watson and Harley Quinn. Oh, that's going to be an easy one. Fuck Harley. Because that would be fun. Um, <laughs> you got to marry Mary Jane. She would be great. And, um, yeah, Poison Ivy. Sorry, but got to pop a cap in that ass. <laughs> you know? I'm so surprised. What did you think I would say? I thought that you would either marry or fuck Poison Ivy. <laughs> and Mary Jane. And that... Then you would kill Harley Quinn because she was a bad girl. Guys like bad girls too, okay? Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Next uh, one. Next one. Um, do, do, do. <laughs> Here we go. Daniel Radcliffe, Rupert Grint, and Alan Rickman. <laughs> Oh my gosh! <laughs> so Harry Potter, Ron Weasley, or Professor Snape? <laughs> oh my gosh! At legal ages, of course. <laughs> At legal ages, and the rule is that if you fuck them, it's it's the best sex you've ever had. And but it's one time only. But it's one time only. I if I let me predict who you would fuck. Okay. Professor Snape, because I think you would would like the mystery, and you, I think you would be intrigued. You'd be like, I wonder what's going to happen. Well, here. I'm not talking about Professor Snape. I'm talking about Alan Rickman. Or Alan Rickman, the the actor. Yes, yes. Hans Gruber. <laughs> no, Alan Rickman, the the the, the, author, the actor, and the, the actor, author. <laughs> and the juggler, <laughs> and the juggalo. <laughs> Um, no, I'm going to marry Alan Rickman. Okay, why is that? Because I love him. Because he's Alan Rickman. Yeah, because he's Alan Rickman. I love him. Um, I think he's very cute, but also like steamy, so sexy, but also interesting and has a really great accent. Yeah. Why would you kill Ron Weasley, Rupert Grant? <laughs> <laughs> How do you know that I would kill Rupert Grant? Because everybody would kill Rupert Grant. <laughs> Okay, so you're right. I was gonna, <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna fuck Harry Potter, and I was gonna, I was gonna kill Rupert Grant. You're gonna play with Harry's wand, okay? <laughs> I mean, he's just a more important historical figure from the history of Hogwarts. Chalk that one up on the bedpost, right? Right. Okay. The Guardian Flavosa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what spell would you have for that? <laughs> <laughs> when Guardian Leviosa. Okay. Okay. Um, for you, Spider Man, Superman, Iron Man. How dare you? Um, well, you got to marry Superman. He'd be so loving. He'd be a loving partner. Would he? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, we'd probably bake cakes, go out under the park and eat a salad together. It'd be great. Um, <laughs> um, and then fucking kill. 
okay, I, I, it's me. I'd probably fuck Spider Man, and I'd have to kill Iron Man. <laughs> I can't believe you would kill Iron Man. Yeah. So Peter Parker, face it, Tiger. You just hit the jackpot. <laughs> <laughs> So you're going to marry Spider-Man's girlfriend and then fuck, fuck Spider-Man. It's America, baby. <laughs> what are you going to do? What are you going to do? <laughs> All right. My turn. Let's see here. Okay. Go the comedian right here. Jim Carrey. Eddie Murphy and Bill Murray. Kill Jim Carrey. <laughs> that was quick. <laughs> Who was the uh, middle one? Uh, Eddie Murphy. Fuck Eddie Murphy and marry the other one. Uh, Bill Murray. Bill Murray for sure. Marry Bill Murray. Yes. But you'd you'd want to fuck Eddie Murphy. You think it'd be awesome. At least among the three, I guess. No, it was clear. So, this time, it was clear who was dead from the very beginning, <laughs> which was Jim Carrey, because I find him a heinously terrible, and unentertaining, almost insulting or revolting in a way. So, definitely dead, Jim Carrey. And so then it was between the two of them who I was going to marry. But I had heard you say Bill Murray, and I was feeling like I was going to marry him. Unless the other person was really good, okay. so that the fuck actually was the the last decision. Okay. So I wouldn't say I wouldn't characterize it as I want to fuck Eddie Murphy. But uh, among the three, yeah, not a yeah, you're not like oh my god. But I do think Eddie Murphy's pretty sexy. I've always thought Eddie Murphy was pretty sexy. Charlie Murphy. No. <laughs> <laughs> Rick James. All right. What's your, what are the next ones? Okay. Next we have Hulk Hogan, The Undertaker, or Becky Lynch. Hmm. It's like bad because like Hogan and Taker, I could probably get away with killing them both and not be too concerned. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Hogan's unrepentant racist and Undertaker's a hardcore Trump-loving conservative who's a Blue Lives Matter type of guy. And Becky Lynch, I mean... Gotta play it fair. I can't do the whole, I would just kill them both and run away with Becky Lynch. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. Um, are you gonna marry Becky or are you gonna fuck her? Oh, that's a thing. That's the thing. I would fuck her because I, I I think you know for how I described it, I think that would be you know unless we hit it off and you know develop something, I think it's just a pure you know physical attraction type of thing that would just be like a bucket list. You know? It's just like you're done with it, great, you move on. You know, um, I mean, but she would also be very cool to marry. But you know, if I had to rank it, I'd go with that. Um, Oh, so now God. you have to you have Either to marry, marry one of these guys. Marry Hulk Hogan or The Undertaker. Um, I'd have to kill The Undertaker, so Hulk Hogan will be my husband. <laughs> I, I yeah. Did you ever imagine as a kid growing up that Hulk Hogan would be your husband? No. Yeah. But it seems right. <laughs> it does seem right, doesn't it? <coughs> Excuse yeah. me. Just a cough. No one has the COVID. Anyway. <laughs> okay. 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 Let me find one here with names that you may know. See, I came up with mine out of my own head. All right. I got three here. Margot Robbie. I don't know who that is. Harley Quinn. Oh. Charlize Theron. Or Sofia Vergara. I don't know who that is. Uh, Latina actress on Modern Family. That doesn't help me. Uh, let me get up a picture. But the first two. Who were the first two again? <laughs> um, where is it? Harley Quinn and... Uh, 
Oh, where was it? Where was it? Margot Robbie, Charlize Theron. I don't know who Margot Robbie is either. Oh, she's Harley Quinn. Yeah. Harley Quinn, Charlize Theron, and Sophia Varga, who I don't know. So that's two people I don't know and one that okay. I don't, don't like. So Try another one. <clears throat> All right. Let's try... Batgirl, Wonder Woman, or Catwoman? Whoa, that's harsh. So I think I would want to marry Wonder Woman because she would be very useful to have around the house and garden. And so then that would leave... Batgirl or Catwoman? Catwoman is going... We're going to fuck. Why is that? Because Catwoman is super sexy. Damn right. And Batgirl, I like her, but she's a girl, so not to be missed much. (laughs) Was that a pun? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. All right. What are your last ones for me? Okay, here are the last ones. Quentin Tarantino, Martin Scorsese, and George Lucas. Hmm. I'd probably kill George Lucas because I don't think he'd be fun for anything. (laughs) You know? Because it's like... If his idea of love is in Attack of the Clones, then no, he he would not be fun to marry, mm-hmm. and he'd be boring to. And he'd be like, having, "Is this doing it for you? <laughs> shall, shall I keep on going?" It sounds like Phil. <laughs> it sounds like Phil. <laughs> I am all finished now. You, you may clean up. <laughs> <laughs> so he would have to die. Um... And then Tarantino and Scorsese are essentially the same thing. So go with Tarantino for the fucking and Martin Scorsese for the marriage. Because at that, at that, at least with Martin Scorsese being married, being married to him, I'd get good spaghetti on occasion. Yes. Yes. And he's closer, probably closer to death, right? So you'd be... I'd get his inheritance. Closer. Yeah. closer and Nicole Smith, out. baby. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Don't sign the prenup. Yeah, just like him, like... With a colostomy bag at the marriage, and I'm like, thumbs up, smile. I don't know, I'm being stupid. Anyway, (laughs) you're like, can we stop this? (laughs) I think we're going to wrap it up here for another week. Um, I certainly had fun. What about you? It was a super good time. Thanks for having me on the show. It was. So, um, we will be back this coming Wednesday. We are going to be continuing our deep dive on. Big Mouth on our regular podcast feed. Um, on our Patreon feed on Tuesday will be our latest episode um, uh, review. We are up to episode eight right now. I forgot the, the the title of that, but that one includes the. I, I hate that song that Matthew sings at the end. That mm-hmm. she used to be my favorite song. Mm-hmm. I mean, because on the one hand, the lyrics fits with what that character went through on that particular episode, and that's fine, I guess. Just it was delivered so Broadway that. I, I, I don't find much passion in Broadway singers. Um, I, 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 I put it that way because as, as far as technical ability, obviously they're there for a reason. I'm not knocking like a singing or musical abilities, but just Broadway I generally don't connect with. What do you think? Well, I think it depends on whether it's live or recorded or you know how you're consuming it. I think I find it much more powerful live yeah of course and i have both seen a show that i'd never heard before live and fallen in love with it and seen a show that i had fallen in love with on the record and been blown away by the difference and just how much more emotional it is when you're actually in the theater yeah like um 
the Book of Mormon. I tried to give that a try. I, I haven't seen it live, but uh, I tried to give the soundtrack a try, and I just couldn't get into it. And same with the producers. Um, mm. I, I was actually in Chicago in t- February of 2001, to be exact, when because the, um, the producers, before I went to Broadway, it tested in Chicago. Oh. And um, we, I was in Chicago like the week before the test runs opened up. So, uh, some, of, some one of their main theaters had you know like Matthew Broderick and Nathan Lane posters up everywhere. Oh. So that was cool. Yeah. Cool. Okay then. <laughs> So, yeah, we got that coming up. And, of course, next week uh, we should have... Uh, the that was a little preview yes. of the Big Mouth Of the Big shows. Mouth, that's right. Um, but next week um, we'll, we should have uh, the good Reverend back in the saddle um, recording again here. So, again, Tuesday on Patreon, our brand new Big Mouth... <clears throat> Big Mouth re- review will be out, so if you can, we would definitely appreciate uh, uh, the support in terms of, at the very minimum, sharing the link. Sharing the link is more than anything. Th- the more people are aware of us, the more you know they may be tempted to, to try us. So, at the very least, share. But if you can support us, great. Um, Wednesday is going to be on our regular podcast feed um, the content that we've had on um, Patreon from a month ago, and then of course Saturdays uh, will be our main show. Uh, maybe we'll get a show for every day of the week. Ooh. 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 Yeah. So you're like, please no. <laughs> you're like, no, I don't want to be a guest host five days out of the week because people cancel shit. No. No, it's more I don't want my house to be a recording studio five days a week. <laughs> yeah, I get that. But um, anyway, that is it. Um, last words? I hope that everybody has a really fantastic week. All right. Same here. Good words. All right. Subscribe to Friends Talking Nerdy on iTunes, the Google Play Music Store, as well as Spotify. Remember to support Friends Talking Nerdy on Patreon. Goodbye, darling.